You guys, Erin here dropping in to give you this week's astrological update, but really what I'm going to be talking about here is something that's most significant over the next four weeks. Okay, now what I'm going to be focusing on is the sign of Leo, and let me mention this right away. You don't have to be a Leo to have a significant influence from this transit. In fact, you don't have to have anything in your natal chart in the sign of Leo to be significantly impacted by this transit. In my opinion, one of the greatest tricks to work with is to get familiar with the houses in your natal chart. See which house in your natal chart the sign of Leo rules. Now, it, this gets a little tricky, whether you're using the whole sign house system or the Placidus house system or Reggio Montanus, depends on what house system you're using. Personally, I highly recommend at least starting out with the whole sign house system. Okay, so let's say, for example, You've got Leo ruling your 10th house. That would be the house of career. Okay, well, you're about to have Venus and Mars go through your house of career, which could be an excellent transit. Or if you're an Aquarius rising and you've got Leo in your seventh house, meaning your house of relationships, well, that area of your life, the area of your life that rules over relationships is about to get activated. Or let's say you've got Leo ruling your third house, your house of communication and mental health. That area of your life is about to get impacted. We all have every single zodiac sign in our natal chart somewhere, whether or not we have any planets in it. Okay, so that's how we could, it's almost like a sky clock. We can see which area of our life is being activated by each and every transit. And right now we're focusing on this sign of Leo. Okay, now, and of course, if you'd like to get a reading with me, I always offer a free video recording of your reading. So you can always go back to that reading, that recording, and see which area of your life is being activated by any astrological transit. Okay, if I'm talking about the sign of Aquarius or the sign of Virgo or the sign of Pisces, you can go see which area of your life that zodiac sign rules. Okay, now, of course, if you have anything in the sign of Leo, Let's say you've got Mercury in Leo. Well, you might want to pay very cl uh, close attention to what I'm about to say here, because really what I'm talking about, okay, the sign of Leo. First, we had Mars enter into the sign of Leo. Now we've got Leo, uh, Venus entering into the sign of Leo. So Venus and Mars together are going to be transiting through this sign of Leo really over the next four weeks. In fact, Venus is going to be in Leo all the way till October, but let's focus on these next four weeks. So say, for example, you've got your Mercury at 14 degrees Leo. Well, guess what? Mars up in the sky, because he entered Leo first. Mars up in the sky is about to attack your Mercury, your nervous system, your conscious awareness, okay? And it's a very interesting transit because shortly after that, a couple weeks after that, then Venus is going to come up and sit right on top of your natal Mercury and she can soothe your nervous system. She can soothe your overall well-being when Venus sits on your Mercury or it, it's a Depends on what we're talking about here. If you've got Mars and Leo, it's going to be a different kind of transit. You might be experiencing some serious frustrations right now if you got Mars and Leo. There's all sorts of things that could be going on for you as an individual. Okay, so it is very beneficial to get familiar with your natal chart. But overall, let's just talk about this sign of Leo for a minute here. Leo is a obviously a very important sign of the zodiac. It's ruled by the sun, the brightest light in the sky. In fact, the sign of Leo is really considered like the leader of the zodiac. Okay. It's represented by the lion, like the lion king. Okay. Now it's very much associated with things like royalty. Leo is a big energy. Okay. It's the fixed fire sign. It holds energy in, has a lot to do with courage and bravery. Moreover, Leo rules the heart. Okay also rules certain parts of the spine, like basically right behind the heart and our back, okay? Leo rules that area of our body. Leo also has a very big influence on our gallbladder. So first of all, if you already are somebody who has heart conditions of sorts, you might want to pay a little, just be a little bit mindful of what you're doing with your body and don't overexert yourself because if, you're, if you've already got uh, challenge stuff in your natal chart and the sign of Leo going on with your heart area, you might want to be a little extra careful with yourself during this transit. But this could also be for some people, it could be great for things like libido. Okay. Mars rules like our sex drive amongst many other things. Mars is aggressive. He is the warrior. He brings down the, the energy that can be frustrating, but also the kind of energy that makes us go do what we got to do. Mars is the the masculine energy. 
Venus is the romantic, okay? Venus rules things like beauty and art and poetry of what we're attracted to. Venus has so much to do, especially going through the sign of Leo. She could be quite extravagant in the sign of Leo. But since we're talking about Venus and Mars together, okay, for some people, this could be a very romantic transit, okay? And for other people, it might be very challenging on a relationship. So of course, so much of this depends on your own natal chart. But overall, this is a really exciting, personally, I love it, especially when I see in somebody's natal chart, when they're born with Venus and Mars conjunct, it doesn't really matter what sign it's in. I really like Venus and Mars traveling together. Again, Mars can be very frustrating. He will uh, influence things like rashes or inflammation, but then Venus can come along and soothe some of that. Okay. So if you would like to schedule a reading and discover how this specifically manifests for you in your own chart, you can schedule through the East West website, which is eastwestbooks.org. Now, when you go to that website, right on top, there's a link that says readers and healers. If you click there, you'll see it's very self-explanatory to schedule a reading with me through the wonderful East West Books website. I do hope to hear from some of you. And until next time, namaste to all of you.